Hi everyone, my name is Victor and this is Jay and we're both from Sky Solar. Today we're bringing you a video where we're discussing what are the common mistakes that a person will make when they're choosing a solar contractor or the common mistakes that solar contractors also do sa site. So ayun, didiscuss namin ni Jay, tutulungan ako ni Jay. Uh, ito si Jay, oh. so, yan sa pinakagwapo naming sales uh, personnel dito sa, uh, sa Sky Solar. Tinan mo naman yung buhok niya, ang ganda-ganda. <laughs> ako inisip ko rin magpaganyan eh, paminsan. Pero baka hindi bagay sa akin kasi may itim ako. Shad. <laughs> <laughs> so, binigyan kami ng key pointers dito. Eh. Okay. Incorrect solar panel placement. Yeah, I think factor din yung incorrect solar panel placement eh. I've seen a lot of solar installations. Um, nakikita ko sa Facebook, nakikita ko sa mga videos is ang laki ng shading na kinocause ng either a mal malaking building or mga puno. So, shading causes a lot of inefficiencies eh. Kasi nakastring yan, Jay eh. Yung solar modules na yan, nakakonect yan na in series. So, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So, alam naman natin ang series connection. Pag ang isang, isang solar module natin, bumaba ang production niya, naging mahina ang voltage niya and uh, power output, it will affect the rest of the street. So, sometimes the way that they design the solar on the roof, onting shading lang dun sa isang, kahit kantong-kanto lang ng solar module, mashadean. Naapektuhan yung iba na hindi naman nasishadean. So, dapat nakoconsider yun ng solar installer. They either have to create their string in a way na mahirap matamaan ng shading or they have to create, uh, ipoposition nila yung, yung solar module natin. Then, yeah, nandito yung tilt na isa sa mga concern ng client natin. Na kapag in-install natin si panel is masyado nakaiga. So, syempre kapag umulan, Mag-iiwan nyo ng bakas ng ulan, then yung may mga dumi, syempre dadaan nyo sa mga pader natin. Pag na-stack yun sa panels nyo, ma-apekto na yung harvest nyo syempre. Kaya dapat ang pag-install natin sa solar module is medyo nakapahalang siya. Yes, that's correct. So at least maybe around 30, 30 degrees. Sometimes pag medyo mataas na, you have to consider the wind speed. Baka tangayin yung solar module natin. But make sure lang na hindi na mumuo yung tubig dun sa solar module natin. Yes. Kasi dito sa Pilipinas, actually, regular yung ulan. Yung ulan natin, para nagiging parang linis din natin sa solar module natin yan. Eh. Ayan, so maganda yun, yung tilt. Marami tayong nakikita online, eh, di ba? Na medyo pahiga na siya. Tapos parang makikita mo dun sa dulo na namumuo na yung dumi. So, sometimes ha, hindi natin masisisi. Some installations talaga, wala, wala talaga silang choice kasi mababa talaga yung roof nila eh. So, ano na lang, regular cleaning na lang siguro pag ganun. Uh, maganda ma-inform lang si homeowner regarding that inefficiency. Yes, pwede nyo naman gamitan ng pressure water. Pressure washer. Then, kung nag-iiwan... <laughs> pressure, <laughs> pressure, pressure water, washer. sorry. Kung nag-iiwan naman ng white stain yung pressure water nyo, pwede nyo gamitan ng mop or tela para ma-wash out yung white stain. Yan. All right. Yan. Okay, then good. sa ano naman nice. natin sir sa MPPT stringing natin. Nakalagay ba yun sa ano? Incorrect. Oh, yan. Yes. Uh, MP, MPPT stringing. So MPPT stringing is called uh, another yung buong buong explanation. Maximum power point tracker. Ibig sabihin ng maximum point tracker is yun yung nakastring mo para makuha mo yung maximum voltage para sa input ng inyong inverter. Ngayon, there are installations na nakikita ko. Ang MPPT kasi design siya dapat na isang direction lang siya. Kunyari, dito ka nakaharap, ganyan. Ganyan yung solar module mo. Dapat sa isang MPPT string, isang direction lang siya. Hindi pwede sa isang MPPT string may nakaharap dito at may nakaharap doon. Kasi ang mangyayari is yung part na shaded, yun nga, yun ang pinafollow mo na maximum power output. So hindi mo na ma-maximize yung solar array mo inefficient yung solar energy system. So, that's just a factor that we need to consider, ha? Yung MPPT stringing natin. Yung weight capacity is something pag-residential kasi masyado hindi mo na kinakalculate yan eh kasi 10 solar modules lang naman times times 10 solar modules times 30 kg is isa. So, 300 kg distributed weight on the solar uh, sa roof. So, hindi masyado siya big factor. But if we're looking at commercial and industrial applications, Kung multiply mo 100 solar modules multiplied by, let's say, um, 30 kgs, so magkano na yun? Ilan na yun? So that's 3 tons na already on your roof. So tama naman yung calculation ko. So 3 tons is not a, it's hindi yung maliit na bagay. Um, you gotta make sure na yung structural integrity ng solar, ng roof natin, can, is capable of carrying that weight. So, yeah. Now, ano nga ba ang importance of choosing the right inverter? So, ito nang ipapasok tayo sa consumption behavior. 
Alam mo kung paano explain na? Sorry, on a surface. <laughs> <laughs> on grid and hybrid. High, hybrid system. So, ganito. There are people who are uh, mostly at home during the day. Mga retirees, senior citizens, work from home. Yung mga ganun na klaseng families, ano sila, um, may specific inverter na pwede sa kanila. And meron din inverter na hindi pwede sa kanila. Okay. So, for instance, mga households na laging wala sa bahay, during the day, the solar is producing electricity. Alam naman natin that solar is most efficiently used when you're using it directly. So, kung wala ka sa bahay, walang gumagamit ng solar mo. So, it's either you're selling it to Meralco or, or you're putting it in batteries. So, pag binenta mo naman yan kay Meralco, you're just getting 5-6 pesos, a fraction of the cost of what you purchase electricity from Meralco. So, it's highly advisable na may batteries ka. So, you'd eventually want to choose a hybrid system. So, kailangan it's important that the contractor analyzes kung ano yung consumption behavior mo. So, you'll tell the client, Ma'am, Sir, pareho po kayo working professionals. Wala po kayo sa bahay. Yung, yung natitira sa bahay is yung yaya nyo lang po. So, mas maganda na ang ginagawa is mag-hybrid system para mag-charge ng battery. So, at night, gagamitin nila yung electricity nyo yun. Kung 13 pesos ang pinasok nila dun sa battery, 13 pesos din yung iko-consume nila. So, malaki yung matitipid nila. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, maraming nako-confuse dito and pag nagpakabit sila ng grid tie system, hindi swak sa consumption behavior nila, nagiging disappointed yung customer. Sabi nila, bakit ganito? but hindi ko nakukuha yung effect or uh, efficiency na ini-expect ko na sa solar energy system ko. So, I think yun yung na-answer doon. Sometimes, sa mga bundok as well, off-grid systems ang mas prefer nila. So, it's important that the salesperson and the, or the solar contractor explains that sa mga interested magpakabit. And dapat yung mga solar installers dyan, dapat ini-explain nyo sa client nyo yan. Alam kong mahabang conversation yan. Pero kailangan maintindihan nila so that they can make good, proper decision sa system na ipapakabit nila. Yes, and ito naman ang net metering. Uh, yun nga, gaya na nabanggit ni Sir Bic kanina, bibilin sa inyo ni Meralco, ito yung 4 to 6 pesos per kilowatt hour. Yun nga yung ilalakad pa natin kay Meralco, magpapasa tayo ng mga requirements, titignan pa natin kung ma-approve tayo. So, depende rin po talaga yung sa house nyo kung i-approve ni Meralco for net metering. Yes. May mga, may mga factors kasi na kailangan i-consider when you're applying for net metering. Sometimes yung mga bahay, wala silang disconnect switch sa service entrance nila. Yung mga lumang bahay na matagal na, matagal nang ginawa, like nako, 19, 1980s pa. Siyempre, yung mga 1980s na bahay na yan, buo pa rin yan, may mga tao nakatira pa rin siya. Pero yung service entrance nila, wala, wala naman sila. Hindi naman requirement yung service entrance before. Ikinakabit lang yung metro sa pader ng bahay mo, okay na, goods na yon. Yun yung panahon ng 1980s, 1990s. Pero ngayon, meron ng framework si Meralco. Kailangan may sarili kang service entrance, kailangan meron kang metro, may mga specs yan na kailangan sinunod. Dapat naka-rigid steel conduit ka, maka-double eyelet U-clamp. U Ang dami, di ba? Yes, sir. Dapat yung grounding wire mo, grounding rod mo, grounding wire mo, puti. Dapat kumpleto yan. Miralco is only going to approve your net metering if compliant yung service entrance mo. Meron silang strict protocol na pina-follow dyan na kailangan i-follow ng net metering applicant. So, Ang daming adjustments na kailangan gawin. Rebuilding of service entrance. Isa yun sa mga things na kailangan gawin para lang ma-approve tayo for net metering. Then in there, magdi-distribution impact study pa si Meralco para malaman lang natin kung may impact yung solar energy system natin sa distribution utility. Ngayon, kung meron, hindi ka ma-approve for your type 1 distribution impact study. Kailangan mag Type 2, I think, ganun. Tapos biglang kailangan pa yan i-power quality analyzer. Maraming process. It will also cost a lot of money. So sometimes the client will just prefer to get solar battery installed. Ganun din. So just, you know, for transparency. How so, about you, Jay? Ano pa? Ano pa uh, next? Ang mga ano pa nila, yung online monitoring naman daw, sir. Paano naman daw yun? Alam ko, ginawa na ni Sir Vic ng video yun. Makikita hmm. nyo sa YouTube channel namin. Okay, follow that. Pero ito, may, may dagdag lang ako sa online monitoring system. Choosing a solar inverter kasi, syempre, ayan, maraming nagtatanong sa amin. 
anong klaseng inverter ba ang maganda? Mas maganda ba tong inverter na to? Itong inverter na to? Ganon. Some different inverters have different online monitoring system. I preferably like those remote control kasi syempre ma-change mo yung settings from afar. Hindi mo na kailangan pumunta pa sa site para mag-change ng settings. Kahit nasa ibang bansa ka pa, maka-access yeah. ka no. Di ba? Ang ganda. Yes, ang ganda. Oh, so some inverters naman, they don't allow that. Yung inverters na yan, may access ba yung manufacturer? Baka yung manufacturer, they can update settings without you knowing. Magkaka-problem yung inverter natin. May mga ganun na factors. So you have to make sure that yung online monitoring system mo is secured. Yung, yung server niya nakakonect either sa European or alam mo yun, may, may personal preference na rin tayo sa mga ganyan na bagay. Yun, mas magandang ma-identify nyo kung ano yung mga personal preference. So you can talk to a professional, you can talk to your sales associate kung ano yung mga preference nila. You can get a lot of information regarding that. Kasi yan na yung software side eh. Hindi pa nadi-discuss masyado yan online, hindi pa yan nadi-discuss marami, masyado ng mga solar contractors sa mga, mga customers. But eventually, as the solar energy industry progresses, that's going to be one of the major topics, major make or break factor ng choosing your inverter. Kasi parang ano yan, tare? Parang Android or iOS. iOS. Di ba? Maraming mga, ah, iOS, mas maganda. Okay iPhone, lang, mas maganda. pwede din. No, di ba? <laughs> Tapos ang Android naman, di ba? Ay, mas maganda Android, ganito. May mga preferences, di ba? So, sabi pa nga nila, eh, tech savvy, gusto nila yung Android, di ba? Hmm. Tapos yung mga social, gusto naka-iPhone. Kasi, Kasi nga, naka -iPhone. pag naka-iOS, kamukha ka mayaman. Ganon, ganon ba? Ganon ang ano nila. <laughs> so, may mga ganon. So, so, when it comes to inverters din natin, may mga ganon na feature. Siyempre, for tech people like us, mas gusto namin yung mga highly sophisticated systems. Kasi you can easily manipulate the inverter to do whatever it is that you want. May mga highly programmable parts yung inverter natin. So, when it comes to tec technical technical parts din yan, yung parts na modular, modularity ng components sa loob ng inverter, if there's one component you wanna replace, mas madali mong ma-replace rather than if it's one unitary system. Mm -hmm. so, and how about naman sir sa considering brands and products? Ayan. Bra there's a lot of brands. There's a lot of brands. Siyempre, we're from NSKY Solar. We're always gonna support ano, um, the brands that we carry because we put a lot of thought and put a lot of attention in working with the people behind the brands that we work with. Choose a branded system. Yung, yung definitely 100% sabihin ko, study the manufacturer. Kasi if you're choosing a, a, a company na hasn't been in the industry long enough, yung support niyan sa software, support niyan sa technical parts, blah, 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 mawawala through time. So, just an example, ang daming brands, I don't wanna name drop eh, ang daming brands na ang galing nila magbenta. Mm. Ang dami nilang na roll out, roll out na products. Ngayon, wala na silang online monitoring system. Those inverters, paano mo sila ma-online monitor? Wala na. Go to their website, wala na silang website. Sa mismo go inverter to their, na. Yeah, go to their online monitoring system, wala na. Thank you, ganun na lang. <laughs> so, 10 years yung warranty ng inverter na yun. Wala na silang online monitoring system. Eh, kasama yun sa package na binenta mo din sa client mo, eh, di ba? So, ano sabihin mo? Palit inverter? So, yung features niya, wala na. Wala na. Di ba? Ano pa ba? Ano, RT, ano pa bang brands? I think yung Meron yung Wala na. Nilaglag na, yun, no? Nilaglag na lahat. Sino pa ba? Sino pa ba yung mga inverter dyan? Na wala na online monitoring system. Di ba? So, ano, meron pa yung mga, yung mga sun, yung mga, ano nga yung mga, yung mga old. Mga old brand na. Yung wala, yung, pero matagal na rin kasi, di ba? Matagal na rin sila. So, uh, I'm surprised some of them gumagana pa nga ng tinesting natin, di ba? Pero, yun. And it's difficult when you're choosing a brand. Sino ba dito sa brand na to na hindi mababankrupt after 10, 15, 20 years? Kaya kung gusto nyong, ano, high quality maging sun ng solar, Pumili kayo ng my team. Oh. <laughs> kasi, kasi alam niyo yung expert yan, laging nasa bubong yan. Grabe, nilaglag mo ako, Art. Uh, Jay, ah. I think for ends kaya, ah, ito ah, yung mga clients namin out there, ah. if ever yung inverter mo, nawalan niya ng tech support, like nawalan within the ten, yung 10-year ten warranty period. Kunyari, okay, nagpakabit ka ng isang inverter sa amin, 
Tapos within the 10 year period na walan ka ng software or uh, hardware support. Palita namin yung inverter mo with the latest inverter that our that we have on our shelves. Yun lang talaga yung warranty ng company namin. We just want to support those people. Siyempre, sobrang bad trip talaga. Sobrang bad trip talaga. Nagpakabit ka ng solar, tas yung inverter mo, mawawala ng support after 5 years, after 10 years, hindi ka na makakonect online. Parang hassle. Tapos ang pinangako pa sa'yo, ang warranty, 10 years. Tapos 5 years lang, wala na. One, one major, parang very rare naman yung hardware failure. Ang pinaka-major dyan is yung software. Software support eh. Kasi na-experience ko na yan eh. Like yung katulad nga nung sa Zevolution. Zevolution 5000. Wala na silang online monitoring eh. So ngayon, ewan ko lang ha. If there's anyone out there from Zever Solar, Zever Solar, Zevolution, if you're still out there, kung meron ka pa rin, kung matuturo, masasabi mo pa rin sa amin paano ma-access yung online monitoring system ng Zevolution, sige nga, comment down below. Okay. So, pero kung what, gusto, gusto ko rin malaman eh, alam mo yon parang ni-research ko na rin siya as much as I can eh. Give a little bit of time on how to connect. Wala, wala na tayong, wala nang connection eh. Wala nang so software support eh, di ba? So, if, yon katulad nun, eh, 10 years yung warranty ng inverter mo eh. So, kung wala nang, ano, palitan natin yung inverter. Ganun lang. Siyempre, karamihan pa naman ng mga tatay, mga ano, ama, nasa ibang bansa, syempre ang gusto nila, na monitor din nila yung solar nila. Solar. Syempre, yes. ang mga misis nila naman, yung sabi nila, hindi naman nila gamay yan, hindi nila alam. So, napaka-importante talaga ng online monitoring. Monitoring system. Sige. So, I hope the discussion that we had today, marami kayong natutunan. First time kong isama si Jay sa video natin para at least ma-expose din siya. And, sa totoo lang. Naya nga ko eh, kasi syempre, Siya na yan, oh. Ano si Sir Victor na yan. Parang nakakayang sumama sa kanya sa video. <laughs> Grabe ka naman. <laughs> so anyways, um, if you have any other questions regarding common mistakes with solar installations or choosing a contractor or solar, kung solar installer ka, mga common mistakes na nagagawa ng solar installer is you can comment down below. I'm sure ang dami. Ang dami natin pwedeng i-discuss, eh. Um, ayoko nang pahabain masyado yung, yung video. But, Comment down below, we can probably come up with a new topic para ma-discuss natin. Para ma-share lang din namin yung experiences namin sa site. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And sobrang thank you for watching our videos. And I hope that you have a fun and solar day today. Mad kulim Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye, thank you.